know we've done it a lot of times, but it's number 10 on 4.5, and it's negative uh, 5 to 4. The, def the, the, to the, the definite integral from negative 5 to 4. Awesome. Yes. And then it's, it's dt over 6 plus t. I just Good. don't know why it's not really, I don't know why I'm having trouble with that. But Excellent. last week, the, we get on Monday, the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. I seem to understand that pretty good, but I don't know why I'm not really getting these too good. Okay. Let's work on this one. Okay. So anyone would like to give us a potential substitution and let's discuss why anyone would like to give it a try it's would okay you, yes would you be the six plus two exactly okay. exactly so now let's determine du because I cannot continue I cannot write this integral and not have a du in there I have to determine du and I think that's where I'm getting the issue. It's like, okay, how do I figure out what du is? Well, what is the definition? What is the formula for du? So let's start with something else then. So let's start with, let's see, let's say we have a function f of x equals e to the 3x plus 2 natural log x. And we want to determine two things. We want to determine the derivative, and we want to determine the differential. So what will be the derivative for f of x? e to the x times the inner function prime. times the inner function prime don't forget the prime it's not times the inner function it's times oh, the inner function prime the zero so let's differentiate 3x three x exactly plus now we are here plus what is the formula for differentiating natural log x One over x. Good. With 2 at the top. Excellent. Now, how do I write the differential for this function? I'm not adding, but you're saying we're multiplying. Correct. So this is dy. Very good. Whatever. Times dx. Not plus. I know, what, I know you didn't mean plus, but I just want to clarify. So it's this times dx. Again, where does this come from? It's the fact that the f prime of x is the same with dy over dx. When you solve this equation for dy, you get f prime of x times dx. That's where it's coming from. So I only have to copy this, 3e to 3x plus 2 over x. So the derivative is only this piece only this. The differential is dy f prime of x times dx. So now we don't have f prime, we don't have f, we have u, it doesn't matter. So the function is u of t, u equals 6 plus t. We want to find du for this function. What will it be? One. So du has to have two pieces. 
when you differentiate this is one I agree but it cannot have just the derivative that's why we talked about this du or dy are the same it cannot be just a function you are correct when you differentiated this yes this piece is one but what else d1 and then dc exactly it happens that for this function is so simple that du is equal to dt fine that's awesome so this piece is replaced by du now this is a function it's 1 over 6 plus t what do I put here I cannot have t so when I move from t to u entire t disappears completely so what do I replace this by I already have du on the side what do I replace 1 over 6 plus t by and it has to be in terms of u Negative one power. Say it again. The negative one power. Okay, so let's discuss one more thing before we continue that problem. A long time ago, we talked about something like this. So, 4 over x is the same with 4 times 1 over x. And it's the same with 1 over x times 4. So when we, look, when we look at dt over 6 plus t, we should be able, based on this, to see 1 over 6 plus t times dt. This is very important to understand. So 4 over x is the same with 4 times 1 over x, or 1 over x times 4. dt over 6 plus t should be seen as 1 over 6 plus t times dt. This is very important in the way uh, to see this in, a, in order to help us continue. So then, 1 over 6 plus t will be replaced by, that's why I said 1 over 6 plus t from here. It will be 1 over 6 plus u. But we already said that 6 plus t was u. Just exactly. We don't want to go back. We already worked hard to find the substitution. U, we know it's 6 plus T. DT is DU. 6 plus T is U. So I have 1 over U. Now I cannot continue before determining the limits of integration for U. These are the limits of integration for T. When T is negative 5, how much is u? 7. 6 minus 5 is? Oh, um, one. Perfect. Now, when t is 4, how much is u? 10. That's it. Now I can continue. And I'm asking myself which function I differentiate to get 1 over u. Exactly, the absolute value of u from 1 to 10. Of course, there is no need, but initially I have to write it. Why there is no need? Because these numbers are positive. So there is no need, but I have to write it initially. So I have natural log 10 minus natural log 1. How much is natural log 1? I think it's just 1. Natural log 1. Put it in the calculator. If you forgot, it's okay. Put in the calculator. Natural log 1. Is it 0? Exactly. Natural log 1 is 0. How do we feel about this? Donna, you're muted. Do you, is it better? better. Yeah, that's, that was definitely better. Thank awesome. you. I just get a little confused about how to find the U. Okay. So always remember, the, the notation is not important. If this is u or y, it doesn't matter. So I have to differentiate this. I get 1. But because the variable is t, I have to write 1 times dt. There is no need to write 1 times dt. So du happens to be equal to dt. 
But I cannot have here 1 over 6 plus t, because I moved from t to u. t is gone. And I don't have to go back because this is a number. The definite integral is a number. It doesn't matter if I use u or t. But so please. The final, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no. The final answer is natural of 10. Okay, so yes. these are the limits for t. I cannot copy them. It's very, very rare that they are the same. My pleasure. Uh, other questions? Very good question. Other questions? Anyone needs help with anything else? Any other concepts or anything that we need to look at? If not, we'll go back to 5.7. Anyone else needs help with anything? Okay, so let's go back then to 5.7. We're talking about differential. equations. And we know now how to check whether a function is a solution. We know how to do that. So we are looking at two different methods. Methods. One which is really nothing, it's called direct. We've been doing, well, you'll see in a moment what that is. The second one is more sophisticated. We have other methods, but only these two uh, are presented in your class. Separable. What does it mean? It means separate the variables. Separable differential equations. Differential equations. So direct. Very simple, nothing. And the second method is separable. In other words, the variables can be separated. If we cannot separate the variables, we will not be able to solve the differential equation because we only look at these two methods in this class. So I'm going to open the book. I hope I am not um, logged out. Where are you guys? I'm sharing my screen. Okay, and I want to go to page two, five, five, three, five. And let's take a look at the first five, three, five. Oh. And I'd like us to look at problems one through six for now. We know how to, when we are given an, a, um, a potential solution, we know how to check whether it works or not. That we learn. So now this is the, um, the situation that I call direct. There is nothing, really. Nothing different from what we've seen before. Um, uh, I will choose if you want. If you want to choose quickly, I, please do. If not, I'll choose three. If you want to choose another, we will. So y prime equals e to 4x minus x plus 2. And they are giving us a piece of information here. It's called initial condition. Y, when x is 0, equals 4. So y of 0 equals 4. We've done this before in a different, different shape, if you want. OK. So the question here is find y. I don't have y. I have y prime. And I'm also told that when that this function has a point on it, 0, 4. When x is 0, y is 4. Or just keep it as 0, a y of 0 equals 4. OK, so now the question is, how do I find y? Well, all I have to do is just integrate both sides dx, integrate both sides, dx. That's all I need to do. So when I integrate a derivative, I get the function. These two operations are inverses of each other. I'll also show you a different way. It's, it's the same thing, but it may look easier. So when I integrate a derivative, 
dx, I get the function plus a constant c, as we know. We've done this before in chapter 4 at the very beginning. So, I need the function that I differentiate to get e to 4x. Minus, I need the function that I differentiate to get x. And plus, I need the function that I differentiate to get 2. Anyone would like to help? All of these were discussed. There is nothing new right now. The e4x over 4x or 4. Exactly. Excellent. Minus. Thank you. x2. Very good. Two. Awesome. Plus. And then 2x. 2x plus a constant c. Sorry it crashes with this. I have to write it again. So e to 4x divided by 4. You don't have to write it twice. Plus 2x plus a constant c. That's it. We've done this in chapter 4 at the very beginning. I am given this piece of information, and I'm going to ask a silly question. Why do you think we're given this? What for? The plug into the function. And determine? C. Exactly. So when x is 0, 0, I'm sorry, e to 0 is 1. 1 fourth, 0, 0. And this is 4. So when x is 0, and I'll put 0 everywhere for x, y is 4. 4 equals e to 0 is 1. 1 fourth, this is 0, this is 0 plus c. And this is how I determine c. I subtract 1 fourth from 4. So c equals 4 minus 1 fourth. 16 minus 1, 15 fourth. The problem is solved. So, as you see, nothing new. We've done this over and over in Chapter 4. So I don't, I'm going to copy and present the correct form. So y equals e to 4x over 4 minus x squared over 2, as you said, plus 2x plus 15 fourth. This is not the most general antiderivative is the specific antiderivative because we are given the initial condition to determine C. If we don't have an initial condition, then this is the final answer. But we have the initial condition helping us determine C. And this is the direct method. Let's look at one more because I want to show you another way of writing it. Um, like 5. In 5 we have y prime equals 3x, 3 over x, sorry, plus x squared minus x to the fourth. The initial condition is 1 comma negative 4. When x is 1, y is negative 4. Okay. So another way of addressing this 